uh, welcome to lectures on uh, power transmission we will be discussing about uh, what is power transmission why power transmission is required and how the power will be transmitted from one pla place of generation to the place where it is supposed to be used and here more preference or we will be focusing mainly on the mechanical power that we need to transmit from one place to another place so let's get let's get started so power transmission is nothing but movement of energy from the place where it's get generated to the place where it performs the useful work so it can be understood with respect to both electrical power transmission as well as the mechanical power transmission with respect to the electrical power transmission we know how the power gets transmitted from the place of generation to place where it is required that is our houses industries etc you see high tension lines transformers that is how the power gets transmitted in the electrical means but when we come to mechanical means we need to have i will consider the example of a machine the machine consists of both a power source as well as a power transmission system or a mechanisms which provide the controlled application of power so for example let me take the example of a lathe machine in case of a lathe machine the source of power will be the motor which runs because of the electric power so we have the rotation electrical power getting generated converted into mechanical power or rotation that will be converted that will be transmitted to various parts of the lathe machine using you have gear drives or you have a lead screw etc so that is how we understand the power transmission with respect to the mechanical perspective so why we need to transmit the power from one place to another place so it is very simple so when i want to transmit the power from one place to another place i will be transferring the motion also i will be transferring the speed as well as the torque also that is one of the prime reasons so most of the time we will be transmitting the power from driver a motor a pedal engine windmill turbine they can all be categorized as drivers wherein they will be trying to rotate or they will be trying to operate a driven member such as a conveyor belt back wheel of your car or bike a generator or rock crusher etc they will all be the driven members which run because of the driver right so also the mechanical power you can transmit using directly a solid structure such as a drive shaft so transmission transmission mechanisms the mechanical transmission mechanism such as your gear drives belt drive etc they try to adjust torque and speed right we know the difference between torque and speed lesser torque will give more speed and less speed will give us more torque in a much similar way how an electric transformer adjusts voltage as well as the current we will explore much about torque versus speed characteristics when we go to gear trains right so there are various mechanisms for, for power transmission right they are called as belt drives there are chain drives rope drives gear drives and couplings so here our preference will be with respect to the gear drives we will explore what are gear drives chain drives rope drives as well as couplings but we will also explore gear drives more elaborately with respect to what are gears how they can be classified and what are the different types of gear coming to belt drives so belt drives are nothing but power transmission mechanisms so we have a pulley here one can be called as an input pulley another one can be called as an output pulley the input pulley can be rotated with the example of a motor and both input pulley and output pulley they are connected with respect to a belt drive so pulley and the belt will be in contact because of the friction this is one of the way in which we can transmit mechanical power from one place to another place the next example can be the chain drives here instead of pulley we have sprockets and sprockets have projections and the chain the gap between the chains will be exactly placed placed inside the projections of the sprocket right both there will be so in if you consider the example here so this is where you will be having your driving sprocket and this will be your driven sprocket so that is how the chain drives are going to work so we have an engine rotating here so the rotation of the engine will be given to the driver sprocket which will be going to rotate the driven sprocket which is in turn connected to the back wheel of your bike so this is how we can appreciate the examples of chain drives so similarly coming to rope drives here they make use of a rope right so there will be pulleys attached so through that we can operate so they will be used only when we want to operate or transmit power over long distances so this is one of the examples that we can appreciate here so if you consider any one of this let me consider that this is the where i am place where i am going to generate the power right using a steam engine or whatsoever so i am go going to get the rotation of this 
driver pulley. So now this is my driven pulley. This is where I want to transmit the power from the place of generation to place where it is required. So then it is a long distance as wherever long distances are involved and we need to transmit the power manually or mechanically you can make use of rope drives. So similarly we have gear drives. So gear drives are preferred when we want to transmit the power to very close distances and where both the driver and the driven should be in physical contact with each other. If you take the example of a belt drive, chain drive or a rope drive, the input and the output they were not in direct contact with each other. So gear drives are specially used or preferred when we need to transmit power over very small distances and one of the prime thing that we have to remember both the driver as well as the driven will be in physical contact with each other. The classic example where we make use of gear drives is in will be in the gear gear boxes of your automobiles apart from that we find the gears are used in numerous application in our daily life we will be exploring more about gear drives right how they are classified what they are how to use them why we use them all those things we will be exploring later so another power transmission mechanism is the couplings right so let me consider one of them so let me consider this as the driver shaft and let me consider this as the driven shaft. So driver shaft is connected to the driven shaft via these couplings. There are various type of couplings which, which we can use to connect driver shaft to a driven shaft. So basically roughly these are the few mechanical means through which we can transmit the power from one place to another place. But more importance or our importance will be to our objective will be to elaborate more on the study of gears. Right. Coming to what is a gear, how to define gears. So gears are nothing but they are the toothed machine parts such as a wheel or a cylinder that meshes with another toothed part to transmit motion or to change speed or direction. So three things we have to remember regarding the definition of the gear. We use the gear to transmit motion. We use the gear to change the speed. Whenever there is a change in speed automatically there will be a variation in the torque also and whenever we want to have a change in direction. So these are the three prime reasons why we make use a gear. If you observe here, so if you look at the inner periphery, it is nothing like a cylinder, right? It is a pure cylinder. So we have projections outside. These projections are called as teeth, right? So in between two teeth, right? So that uh, teeth from the another meshing gear will be sitting inside the recess. So they will be locking with each other and they try to rotate. So this is how we can visualize the definition of a gear. It is a toothed machine parts. Right, which meshes with another toothed part to transmit motion, to change speed or to change direction. So this is how we can define gears in a very rough way. So why do we use gears and when do we use gears? To when, whenever I need to reverse the direction of rotation or whenever we want to have increase or decrease in the rotational speed so that alternatively we can have an increase or decrease in the torque also to transfer rotational motion to a different axis. I have, a, I have the power available in the horizontal axis but I want to transfer it to a vertical axis. Yes, we can make use of a gear drive or to keep the rotation of the two axes as synchronized. So these are the four prime reasons why we make use of a gear. Okay. So how to classify gears? What are the different classification of gears or what are the different types of gears? So according to the relative position of the axis, we can have three different classification of gears. Either they can be parallel axis gears, intersecting axis gears, neither parallel nor intersecting axis gears. We will explore that with respect to the example or with respect to the graphical representation here. Now we see that we can assume any one of them. So this can be the driver and this can be the driven shaft, both of which are mounted with a gear. We see that the axis of the driver gear and the axis of the driven gear are parallel to each other. So such type of gears we call it as the parallel axis gears. So the intersecting axes are the axis of one of the gears either driver or be driven will be horizontal another one the driver or the driven will be perpendicular to it. So both of them are going to intersect at this point. Right? So these kind of gears we call it as the intersecting gears. Now there are another set of gears wherein we have this will be the axis of the driver gear this will be the axis of the driven gear. They are not parallel to each other or they are not going to intersect. So such third category of gears we are going to call them as non-parallel or non-intersecting gears. So we get three classes parallel axis, intersecting axis and non-parallel and non-intersecting axes. Now coming here for the parallel axis 
we can have different classification so parallel shaft gears they can be further classified into two types spur gears and helical gears so intersecting shaft so one axis will be horizontal another one will be vertical where they are going to intersect at some point so we can have bevel gears spiral bevel gears and mitre gears we will explore the meaning of all these gears usefulness and how visualize all these gears at a later stage but our prime objective here is to classify the gears as parallel shaft intersecting shaft non intersecting and non parallel shaft so similarly coming to non intersecting and non parallel shaft so we have screw or crossed helical gears we have hypoid gears and we have warm gears wherein the axis of driver and driven will not intersect and they will not be parallel so similarly coming to the second classification according to the velocity of the gears so we can have low medium and high velocity gears if the speed is less than 3 meter per second it will be low velocity gear if the speed is between 3 to 15 meter per second they will be classified as medium velocity gears if the speed is more than 15 meter per second that will be classified as the high velocity gears so similarly coming to the third category according to how the gears are going to mesh with each other if they mesh internally like this they will be called as the internal gears so if you observe in whatever the direction the driver is going to rotate the driven will also rotate in the same direction that will be the internal gears they will be meshing internally or we have two external cylinder which have toothed projection at the outer periphery if they mesh with each other right and the if the driver rotates in the clockwise direction the driven or the follower will rotate in the opposite direction that is the counter clockwise direction so according to the type of gearing they can be either internal gearing or external gearing both of them have their own significance which we will explore later so we will be only discussing about the classification of the external gears here according to the position of teeth right if the teeth are cut straight right without any curves or without any inclinations so such type of gears are called as straight teeth gears example is a spur gear so similarly we can have inclined teeth where the te when the teeth are cut at certain angles the example is a helical gear so similarly they can be curved they can have various type of curves so they will be called as the spiral gears we will explore the meaning of all these things so coming to spur gears we said that various classifications so you can observe the classification here parallel shaft intersecting shaft and the non intersecting non parallel shaft so we will first start with the parallel shafts the one of the classic example for the parallel shaft is the spur gears so why do we use spur gears they are used to transmit power between two parallel shafts so this is a driver gear this is a driven gear the axis of both are parallel to each other so in such a case when i want to transmit power from this axis to this axis which are parallel to each other we are going to make use of spur gears now we have to observe that the teeth on these gears are cut straight and they are parallel to the shaft so the teeth should be parallel to this so if the axis of the teeth so if this is the axis of the driven gear the teeth axis should be parallel to it such a gears are called as the spur gears they produce noise because the contact occurs over the full face instantaneously so this is the teeth on the driver gear this is the teeth on the driven gear the whole surface comes into contact immediately so they produce certain noise and vibration that will be the disadvantage when we make use of a spur gears but yet spur gears are used in various applications such as your uh, uh, such as your uh, hand clocks etc where the speed of rotation will be very less whenever more speeds are involved when whenever the rotational speed is very high spur gears are avoided because they make contact instantaneously producing noise and vibration but when it comes to a hand clock or a hand watch so if you observe the speed the rotational speed will be very very less so in such a case spur gears will be because the manufacturing will be very easy and the rotational speed involved are very less so spur gears will be very much advantageous that is one of the reasons why we make use of them in watches and clocks where the rotational speed speeds will be very less coming to the helical gears instead of cutting the teeth teeth straight so parallel to the axis they will be cut at an angle and that angle will be called as an helix angle so usually that will be less than 20 degree so this makes the teeth to have gradual contact 
right so that they produce very less noise and less vibration right and the operation will be very quiet that is when we make use of the helical gears instead of spur gears so this if this is a teeth on the driver gear if this is a teeth on the driven gear the engagement will be gradual they will gradually engage and gradually disengage so that the contact a surface or contact area will be very less so that the engagement and disengagement happens gradually and they are very much smooth and quiet so whenever the rotational speeds are high in such applications we are going to make use of the helical gears and once so this is how the helical gears are going to look like you can just observe that the teeth are cut at a certain angle and this angle of inclination is called as the helix angle in a helical gear so similarly coming to the application so the classic example of where the helical gears are used is the in the gear boxes of the automobiles so the rotational speed involved are very high so they have to make if you observe here they make gradual contact so as both gears are going to mesh they are gradually going to engage and disengage so the surface area of contact will be very less and it gradually changes so the operation will be very smooth and quiet so whenever we want to have less noise less vibration and quiet operation and rotational speeds are very high we are going to make use of the helical gears so similarly coming to the another version of the helical gear is called as the double helical gear so it is it is also called as the herring bone gears so it is a specific type of double helical gear that is side to side right they are not face to face they are side to side uh, with respect to a center the gear the teeth will be cut on either sides right on the like helical gears they have the advantage of transferring power smoothly because more than two teeth will be in mesh at a moment on on the opposite sides their advantage over the helical gear is that the side thrust of one half will be balanced by the other half right so that the pressure that falls on the bearings will be very less and right and you can even think of eliminating the thrust bearings right which are used in the axial power transmission it looks like this so the it will have more balanced transmission of power and also the pressure that falls on these bearings will be very much less so in that cases you can make use of double helical gear where with respect to a center the teeth will be cut on either side so that the power transmission will be balanced that is about the herring bone gears or which are also called as double helical gears coming to the bevel gears they are useful whenever we want to change the direction of uh, whenever we want to change the axis i have the power available in the horizontal axis but i want to transfer it to a vertical axis 90 degrees in such a case you can make use of bevel gears the teeth in that case can be cut either straight they can be spiral or hypoid we will explore those possibilities right so this is how the bevel gear looks like so i in this any one so this will be the axis of the driver gear this will be the axis of the driven gear either you can interchange this can be the driven that can be the driver so they are going to intersect here this is an example for intersecting gears bevel gear is an example because the axis are going to intersect here i can transmit the power from the vertical direction to the horizontal direction or vice versa right so this is an classic example this is a coffee grinding machine so if you observe here this will be the input shaft and this will be the axis of the output shaft both of them are going to intersect at this point now this is the input crank the moment i start rotating the input crank the shaft is going to rotate in the horizontal direction and it is connected to the vertical direction via a bevel gear right so now whenever the crank is rotated the output shaft is going to rotate in the vertical direction and we have the coffee beans in the vessels which gets grinded because of the rotation of the input shaft which will be transmitted to the output shaft it is vertical in direction this is how we can make use of a bevel gear whenever we want to transmit power from horizontal axis to vertical axis or vice versa so we have another uh, classification of a bevel gear which are called as mitre gears right so they have the speed ratio equal to 1 the number of teeth on the driver will be exactly equal to number of teeth on the driven there will be no change in speed with whatever the speed the driver is going to rotate the driven is also going to rotate with the same speed so such type of bevel gears are called as mitre gears the speed ratio will be exactly equal to 1 there will be no change in speed so in that case they are with the such type of bevel gears are going to be called as the mitre gears so this is how the bevel gears are going to look like 
graphically. So we can, so one can be considered as a driver shaft. This will be the axis of the driver shaft. This will be the axis of the driven shaft and both of them are going to intersect here. This is a classic example for an intersecting shaft or intersecting gears. So another classification of the bevel gears is the spiral gears. So even in the spiral gears, it will be an intersecting. This will be the axis of the driver and this will be the axis of the driven. So both of them are going to intersect here, right? Spiral, spiral bevel gears. So this is a uh, classification of the bevel gears only. So instead of the teeth, Cut, being cut straight so it will it will have curved tooth lines so it will be it will not be inclined it will not be straight right but instead it will be curved right such type of gears are called as the spiral gears so whenever they are arranged in bevel fashion that means to transmit the axis whenever whenever we want to transmit the power from one axis to another axis they will be called as the spiral bevel gears due to higher tooth contact ratio, they are superior to straight pivot gears with respect to efficiency, strength, vibration and noise. So since they have a smooth curve, the engagement and disengagement will be extremely smooth when compared to inclined gears. So on the other hand, they are very difficult to produce, but upon successful production, they will be very smooth, they will be highly efficient, they will have more strength, lesser vibration and lesser noise. And one thing we have to remember with respect to the spiral gears is that axis of the driver and the D1 should intersect, only then they will be called as the spiral bevel gears. And whenever and we have another type of gears called as the high pod gears, they are the special type of the spiral gears that have the axis which are non-intersecting and non-parallel. If you observe, so this will be the axis of your pinion and this will be the axis of the driven member and both of them are not going to intersect and they are not parallel to each other. In such a case, we are going to call them as the hypoid gears. The axis of the hypoid gears are offset. So this is the offset distance from the driver to driven. The basic geometry of the hypoid gear will be hy uh, hyperbolic. So if you see the profile here, this will be an hyperbolic profile that will be cut here rather than having a conical geometry. So whereas for the crown or the driver uh, or the driven member, we can have any type of geometry. So this is how we can visualize the animation of a hypoid gear. In the hypoid gear or gear boxes, the spiral angle of the pinion, if you observe here, so that will be larger than the spiral angle on the gear. So here on the crown or on the driven, they are cut inclined or they are cut straight, but the and the pinion diameter and the how they are cut on the pinion or on the driver will be much larger. So this provides more contact area and better tooth strength. So we can transmit more power and more torque with respect to this kind of a uh, configuration. And the classic example of where we make use of the hypoid gears will be in the differentials. Whenever we want to transmit more torque from one axis to another axis. So if you observe carefully here, right? So this will be the driver member. So this will be the end of the drive shaft and they will be connected to the differential. This will be driven member also called as the crown. This will be the driver member also called as the pinion. So it will have more, so it, uh, it will have more spiral angle when compared to the spiral angle that is provided on the pinion. So it will be cut straight or inclined, but it will have more spiral so that they produce very less noise and vibration, but whereas they should be capable of transmitting more power and more torque. And one example is of the hypoid gear, uh, the application of the hypoid gears will be in the differential. So another type of gear is the worm and worm gear. They are again the example for non-intersecting and non-parallel gears. So they are the special gears that resemble screws and they can be used to drive spur gears and helical gears. The driver will not be spur gear or helical gear, but the driver will be will look something like a screw and the driven will be a spur gear or helical gears. We are going to make use of wor uh, the worm gears whenever we want to have large gear reductions, right? such as 20 is to 1 or 300 is to 1. If the driver rotates 300 times, the driven will rotate only one time. So that is how we can visualize the the drastic reduction in the speed that the worm gears can bring. So they have an interesting property that no other gears have. They can only the driver, only the screw can turn the spur gear or helical gear, but the gear in turn cannot rotate the screw. That is a classic example. Only driver can, driver and driven are fixed here. They cannot interchange. Worm will always be the driver and the gear will always be driven. That cannot be interchanged, right? So this is how they look like. So this worm, Right? Some that looks like a screw will always be the driver which rotates the gear 
either this can be a spur gear or it can be in helical gear whatever but this can in, this cannot interchange this cannot drive this this combination is not possible right so this is one example that we can take for a worm and a worm gear so we have a motor so this is the input shaft which is connected to a worm so it looks like a screw gear so they are going to rotate at very higher speed so now i want to transmit power from this axis to this axis so the axis are not going to intersect they are going to pass one above the another they are not going to intersect and they are not parallel to each other they are perpendicular to each other in this case right so when this rotates by 20 times 30 times or 50 times the gear is going to rotate only by one time so suppose say this makes 20 revolutions this is going to rotate by only one time because we know dc motor are going to rotate at very high speeds but to obtain more torque i need to have a drastic reduction in speeds so that is when the worm gear comes into play and help us so they can also be made use of in your guitars where they can transmit more torque right so this is how we can graphically represent a worm and a worm gear so another type of gears are called as the rack and pinion gears. So the rack and pinion gears are extremely helpful whenever we want to convert the rotation from one type of one type of whenever we want to convert rotation into a linear motion. So the one that you find here the horizontal one is called as the rack and the rotating member is called as the pinion. Usually pinion will be the driver right and this will be the driven member we can convert rotation into linear and in few examples we can also have linear motion getting converted into rotation but most of the cases rack and pinion the input will be rotary output will be the linear motion right so this is how we can uh, graphically represent a rack and pinion mechanism so the rotation of the shaft will be converted into a linear motion of the rack and one classic example or application of the rack and pinion will be in the microscope. The moment to start turning the knob, right, the platform of the microscope will start moving up and down. So we make use of a rack and pinion gear in such a case. So this is one consolidated uh, picture where we can appreciate the inclusion or importance of all kinds of gears. So we have, we, we can start with a axis here. Uh, you can give the input anywhere. So we have straight bevel gear, we have spiral bevel gear, spur gear, helical gear, miter gear, we have rack and pinion, right? So we have screw gear, worm gear, internal gear, gear coupling, etc. So all type of gears you can visualize here, right? So this is how various type of gears, right? They can come together to perform some useful work, right? You can just go, go deep into this and appreciate how the different gears can be used in different instances and applications. So also we have something called as idler gears. What is the, we know that in external gearing, whenever driver and driven are connected to each other, both will be rotating in the opposite direction. So what is that I am supposed to do? If I want both driver and driven to rotate in the same direction, the logic is very simple, introduce another external gear in the center. Right? So now we have a driver gear A, which is rotating in the counterclockwise direction. Now between the driver and the driven, I am going to add the idler gear in the red color called as B. Now whenever A rotates in the counterclockwise direction, we have B rotating in the clockwise direction. So obviously the driven member which is connected to B on the right side again will start rotating in the counterclockwise direction. Now both driver and the driven will be rotating in the same direction. So basically we should have odd number of gear arrangements. In, if we want to obtain the same direction of the driver as well as the driven. So we need to introduce the idler in between. So idler is not going to change anything, but instead it will only make the driver and the driven to rotate in the same direction. So it only the, the change in speed or change in torque depends only on the number of teeth that are available on the driver and driven and the number of teeth on the idler will not, will not make any difference to the speed or the torque that we are going to do. So similarly, idler gears can also be used whenever we want to transmit motion from one axis to another axis. So I have the driver rotating in the counterclockwise direction. So similarly, I want the driven to rotate in the counterclockwise direction, but it is in a different axis. So similarly, you can have the idler gear connected B, so which changes the rotation of the driven member with respect to that of the driver. So this is how we can appreciate the importance of an idler gear. So, so far we have discussed about the different power transmission mechanisms and out of that by taking the gear drives, we have explored the different classification of gears. So this ends lecture number one. In the next lecture, we will start with the kinematic design of the spur gears.
right and the and the different terminologies that are associated with understanding the gear profiles right thank you